Hello everyone. I would like to start by thanking the organizers for inviting me to talk about our work and for being incredibly accommodating. Unfortunately, I am not able to attend PAG in person, but I am very excited to tell you about our work on BioVis Connect, an all new web application linking the cloud resources of Cybers with the visualization of the integrated genome browser. My name is Nolan Fries and I am in the Genome Visualization Lab at UNC Charlotte under Dr. Anne Lorraine. Our focus is on building tools to better understand genomic data, and one of the primary ways we do that is through data visualization. One of our key software products is the Integrated Genome Browser, or IGBY. So what is IGBY, and how do I get it? IGBY is a free-to-use genome browser that was first developed in 2001 at Affymetrix, and is now an open source project developed by our group. You can download IGBY from our website, bioviz.org, and install it on your laptop or desktop computer. So what can I do with IGBY? IGBY includes many of the common reference genomes and is able to load everything from sequencing data from RNA-seq or ChIP-seq experiments, coverage graph data, and gene annotations. What can I do once my data is loaded into IGBY? One of the main use cases is to visually analyze your data. Now this can be important for a number of reasons. For example, as a sanity check that the data appear as you would expect them. Or maybe you want to investigate a region or gene of interest in detail, viewing several types of data layered together. To demonstrate what I mean by visually analyze and interact, I've included an example in IGBY using data from a ChIP-seq experiment investigating binding sites for the ant transcription factor in Arabidopsis from Dr. Beth Krizek's lab. The first thing I did was to load the tagged and untagged ChIP-seq graph tracks. I then used IGBY to subtract out the untagged graph data from the tag data giving me the difference track that you can see in blue, where the only values remaining should be those of the tagged peaks. I then set a user-defined threshold of 2.5 to help me identify peaks of interest. Finally, I zoomed in to a particularly tall peak and used Igby's advanced search to find predicted motifs. Of course, Igby has many other features of which we are adding more functionality including through the use of pluggable apps through the IGBY App Store. Now the other main use case for IGBY is of course creating images for publication, posters, and presentations. Here you can see some figures I pulled from recent publications using IGBY. It's always exciting to see the different ways that IGBY is used to display data. For example, in the leftmost figure, data from mock and ABA treated samples are overlaid on top of each other making for a striking comparison. Or, many data tracks can be loaded simultaneously, showing many different types of data. So I hope I've quickly convinced you that IGBY can be very useful. But what if we can make it easier to use and more powerful? The past decade has seen sequencing costs plummet and the number of reference genomes available skyrocket. Imagine a scenario where you have generated RNA-seq data for 50 samples, totaling hundreds of gigabytes of data, and even something as simple as generating whole genome coverage graphs for those samples would be difficult to do. So while IGBY can use the graphical horsepower of your local computer, you are probably not going to store that data on your laptop. So we knew that we needed to connect a cyber infrastructure that could provide storage and compute that we could easily work with which brings us to Cyverse. Cyverse has been around since 2008 through funding by the National Science Foundation. It supports hundreds of thousands of researchers by providing a platform for storing and analyzing large amounts of data. They have a number of products, including the data store, science APIs, and discovery environment. As an example, the discovery environment is great for storing and managing your data running analyses on that data, and sharing files. However, if you want to then view your discovery environment data, you are going to need to use a genome browser, 
such as Igby. So in many ways, Cyverse is the perfect complement to Igby. Cyverse provides amazing cyber infrastructure resources, and we, Igby, provide the visualization. Our goal then became to make it as easy as possible to connect your Cyverse data to the integrated genome browser. Thankfully, Cyverse has created an incredibly powerful way to connect with its resources through their science APIs, specifically the Terrain API. Therefore, we created BioVis Connect, a web application that utilizes the Terrain API to unite the data storage and analysis of the Cyverse discovery environment with a genomic visualization of the integrated genome browser. So what is BioVis Connect? BioVis Connect is a web application that you run in your web browser from BioVis.org. It is free to use and completely open source, just like Igby. The focus of BioVis Connect is making it as easy as possible to view your Cyverse data in Igby. So at this point, let's go ahead and view a demo of how BioVis Connect could be used. But before I start, I would like to point out that the data in the demo are available for everyone to try, so please check out our website and try for yourself. So this is our website, BioVis.org. If you would like to install Igby, click the Install Igby button. To access BioVis Connect, click on the link here. Then click on the Sign in with your Cybers ID button. To log into BioVis Connect, you will use your Cybers username and password. This is similar to other single sign-in providers. For example, if you have used your Gmail account to log into a website. So I will go ahead and enter my server's username and password. And go ahead and click login. Cybers will authenticate me and then direct me to BioVis Connect. BioVis Connect should look familiar to anyone who has used cloud storage providers such as Google Drive or Dropbox. My files and folders are visible here in the main panel. At the top, we have a search bar that can be used to find files or file types. And on the left, we can navigate between our home folder, the shared folder, which contains all of the files and folders other users have shared with you, and the community folder, which contains files that are publicly available to everyone. We have our own folder, BioVis, that has the data we will be working with today. So we'll go ahead and double click to open the folder. The data are from an RNA-seq experiment in Arabidopsis looking at abiotic stress. We want to look at the scaled coverage graphs for the data as we are interested in differential expression for our gene of interest. Notice that the files have the unique but not very human readable SRA numbers for their names. If we right click on a file, we get some options, many of which you might expect, such as renaming or deleting a file. But we also have some BioVis Connect specific options. So Manage Link allows us to create public links to files that we can share. The Analyze Link can be used to run jobs on files. For example, all of these scaled coverage graphs were created through BioVis Connect and Cybers. And the Metadata Link allows us to view additional information about the file, which we need as our file names are not the most descriptive. BioVis Connect allows us to add metadata to files. So here we can see that this is a 21 day old control. I've also added Igby specific metadata. So when we view this file in Igby, the file's metadata, such as the track name and color will be transferred. This is great as we can get all of our samples labeled and colored just the way we like. And all of that information is safely stored in Cyverse and then immediately available in Igby when we load the data. Now that I know what I'm looking at, I wanna go ahead and view this file in Igby. If a file has the View in Igby button, that means it can be viewed, so I'm going to click on View in Igby. And then I want to compare the control to a heat-treated file, so also go find a heat-treated sample and click View in Igby. BioVis Connect will check to see if the file is public. In this case, these files are within the community folder, so they are. And then it will check to see if Igby is running, and it is. Because the file metadata specified the Arabidopsis genome, Igby has gone ahead and loaded the Arabidopsis genome for us. So while the two files are added to Igby, let's go ahead and find our gene of interest. So I'm gonna type in SR45A to select my gene of interest. 
And now that the files have been added, we can click Load Data. Now you might initially think that the expression is very similar between these two samples, but the last thing I need to do is to make sure that the data are on the same scale. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the Graph tab, as these are graph files. I'm going to click Select All to select all of my graph files. And then I'm going to set the scale to 30 and hit Enter. And now we can see that these two samples are on the same scale, and it appears that the heat-treated sample has greater expression of our gene of interest than our control. So I hope the demo gave you some ideas for how BioVis Connect, IGBI, and Cybers could be useful for your own work. At this point, I would like to thank everyone on our team who has worked so hard to create BioVis Connect. We have access to absolutely amazing computer science and information technology master students here at UNC Charlotte. Following his master's, Karthik has stayed on as a PhD student in the lab, while Srishti, Puan, and Chaitanya are software development engineers at Amazon, and Chester is a solution specialist at Deloitte. I would also like to thank the Cyverse team for all of their help over the years. The Cyverse team has been fantastic to work with, and we could not have done it without them. If you have any questions about BioVis Connect or IGBI, please send me an email. It is incredibly easy for me to do online demos of IGBI and BioVis Connect, or to help out if there is something you are stuck on. We also have how-to videos on our YouTube channel, just look for Integrated Genome Browser, as well as a user's guide at wiki.bioviz.org slash confluence. The BioVis Connect paper is out now and goes through some additional examples of how it can be used in research, as well as an in-depth look at how we created it. And with that, I would like to again thank the organizers, as well as everyone in attendance. I hope you enjoy the rest of PAG, and I wish I could have been there.